Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the biotic and abiotic factors that can affect a community. In the last video we saw that biotic factors are the living parts of an environment and the abiotic factors are the non-living parts. In this video we're going to look at these in more detail. There are four different biotic factors and in the exam you could be asked about any of them. The first biotic factor is the availability of food. All animals eat other living organisms. For example, lions eat other animals, whereas animals such as zebras eat plants. However, all sources of food, whether animals or plants, are a biotic factor. And if the availability of food falls, then the number of organisms in that community will also fall. Another biotic factor is the arrival of a new predator. This can cause the population of a prey species to fall. A new predator can also affect existing predators, for example if they're competing for the same prey. Competition between species is another biotic factor. If a species is outcompeted, then its population can fall so much that numbers are no longer sufficient to breed, and the species may become extinct. The final biotic factor are new pathogens. If an infectious disease emerges and then spreads, it can wipe out a population of a species. Okay, we're going to take a look now at abiotic factors, and remember that abiotic means not living. There are seven different abiotic factors, and in the exam you could be asked about any of them. The first abiotic factor is light intensity, and this can have a major effect on plants. All plants need light to carry out photosynthesis. However, if the light intensity is too low, then the rate of photosynthesis falls, and plants will grow more slowly. Now this can have a major impact on a community. If plants grow more slowly, then animals which feed on plants may not have enough food. Temperature is also a really important abiotic factor. If the temperature of an environment changes, then this could cause the distribution of species to change. For example, animals could migrate and plant species might simply disappear from that area. Both plants and animals need water to survive, so water is also a major abiotic factor. Many species are adapted to deal with low levels of water, and we'll be looking at these adaptations in the next video. The pH and mineral content of the soil is an important abiotic factor for plants. Many plants cannot grow on soil which is too acidic or too alkaline. Plants also need certain minerals in the soil, for example nitrate, which is used to make amino acids for proteins. The wind intensity and direction is another abiotic factor that can affect plants. For example, strong winds blowing inland from the sea can cause plants to lose water. So plants growing in sand dunes are often adapted to reduce water loss. The final abiotic factors are the gases carbon dioxide and oxygen. Carbon dioxide is needed for plants to photosynthesize, and if carbon dioxide levels fall, then the rate of photosynthesis can also decrease. Oxygen is needed for aerobic respiration. Now the level of oxygen in the air stays fairly constant. However, the level of dissolved oxygen in water can fall, for example on hot days, and this can be harmful to aquatic organisms such as fish. Remember you'll find plenty of questions on biotic and abiotic factors in my revision workbook and you can get that by clicking on the link above.